Okay, this is chapter nine of the ATI Mental Health Stress Management. Stress is the brain's natural response to any demand. Stressors are physical or psychological factors that produce stress. Any stressor, whether it is perceived as good or bad, produces a biological response in the body. Individuals need the presence of some stressors to provide interest and purpose to life. However, too much stress or too many stressors can cause distress. Anxiety and anger are damaging stressors that cause distress. The body responds to a perceived or actual threat by activating the fight or flight response. If stress is prolonged, maladaptive responses can occur. Stress management is a client's ability to experience appropriate emotions and cope with stress. The client who manages stress in a healthy manner is flexible and uses a variety of coping techniques or mechanisms. Responses to stress and anxiety are affected by factors, age, gender, culture, life experiences, and lifestyle. The effect of stressors are cumulative. For example, the death of a family member can cause a high amount of stress. If the client experiencing that stress is also experiencing other stressful events at the same time, this could cause illness due to the cumulative effect of those stressors. A client's ability to use successful stress management techniques can improve stress-related medical conditions and improve functioning. Viewing a stressor as positive appears to be the result of adaptation or learning, also known as preconditioning from previous stressful experiences. For example, a short-term or acute stress response, such as preparing to make a speech or take an exam, allows a person to be at high level of mental and physical performance. Assessment. Protective factors increasing a client's resilience or ability to resist the effects of stress include the following. Physical health, strong sense of self, religious or spiritual beliefs, optimism, hobbies and other outside interests, satisfying interpersonal relationships, strong social support systems, and humor. An individual's response can be described as fight, faint, flight, freeze, or fawn. Fight is facing the stressor or situation ready to confront or fight. Faint is limiting exposure to stress by physically fainting or experiencing syncope. Flight is running away from or fleeing the stressor or situation. Freeze is unable to respond or react against the stressor or situation. And fawn is attempting to please or give in to the stressor or situation. Expected findings. Acute stress, fight or flight. Apprehension, unhappiness or sorrow. Decreased appetite. Increased respiratory rate, heart rate, cardiac output or blood pressure. Increased metabolism and glucose use. Depressed immune system. Prolonged stress, maladaptive response, chronic anxiety or panic attacks, depression, chronic pain, sleep disturbances, weight gain or loss, increased risk for myocardial infarction, stroke, poor diabetes control, hypertension, fatigue, irritability, decreased ability to concentrate, increased risk for infection, chronic exposure to stress hormones, specifically cortisol, weakens the immune system, resulting in increased susceptibility to illness and infection. Standardized screening tools, life-changing events questionnaire, and Holmes, the Holmes and Ray stress scale to measure life changes units perceived stress scale, and Lazarus cognitive appraisal. The use of these stress scales can provide the nurse with insight into their client's experience of stress and risk for developing an illness. It is a useful part of the client's plan of care for stress reduction and coping. Patient-centered care. The nursing care is the most nursing care involves teaching stress reduction strategies to clients. Cognitive techniques. Cognitive reframing. The client is helped to look at irrational conditions, cognitions, which are thoughts, in a more realistic light and to restructure those thoughts in a more positive way. As an example, a client may think they are a terrible father to my daughter. A health professional using therapeutic communication techniques could help the client reframe that thought into a positive thought. I've made some bad mistakes as a parent, but I've learned from them and have improved my parenting skills. The nurse should encourage their client to learn to talk to themselves with kindness rather than doubt or blame. Positive self-talk is linked to a physical and mental health benefits. Behavioral techniques, relaxation techniques, meditation is a technique used to train the mind and help a greater help a greater calm. Meditation can help a client connect with their deep inner self and promote healing and strategies to cope with stress. Guided imagery. The client is guided through a series of images to promote relaxation. Images vary depending on the individual. For example, one client might 
imagine walking on a beach while another client might imagine themselves in a position of success. Breathing exercises are used to decrease rapid breathing and promote relaxation. Progressive muscle relaxation is a technique used to achieve a relaxation response. This technique involves purposely tensing specific muscle groups and then relaxing them in a progressive format. This can be performed with external feedback or without. Progressive muscle relaxation is an easy technique that can be performed almost anywhere. Physical exercise. Yoga, walking, biking can causes release of endorphins that lower anxiety, promote relaxation, and have antidepressant effects. Use nursing judgment to determine the appropriateness of relaxation techniques for clients who are experiencing acute manifestations of psychotic disorder. Journal writing. Journaling has been shown to allow for a therapeutic release of stress. Journaling can ease anxiety, worry, and obsessional thinking. It also can increase confidence and hope. This activity can help the client identify stressors and make specific plans to decrease stressors. Priority restructuring. The client learns to prioritize differently to reduce the number of stressors affecting them. For example, a person who is under stress due to feeling overworked might redelegate some tasks to others rather than doing them all on their own. Biofeedback. A nurse or other health professional trained in this method uses a sensitive mechanical device to assist the client to gain voluntary control of such autonomic functions as heart rate and blood pressure. Exercise gadgets and smartwatches provide the ability to track sleep and heart rates. Mindfulness. The client is encouraged to be mindful of their surroundings using all of their senses, their relaxing warmth of sunlight or the sound of a breeze blowing through the trees. The client learns to restructure negative thoughts and interpretations into positive ones. For example, instead of saying, it's so frustrating that the elevator isn't working, the client restructures the thought into, using the stairs is a great opportunity to burn off some extra calories. Assertiveness training. The client learns to communicate in a more assertive manner in order to decrease psychological stressors. For example, one technique teaches the client to assert their feelings by describing a situation or behavior that causes stress, discussing feelings about the behavior or situation, and then making a change. The client states, when you keep telling me what to do, I feel angry and frustrated. I need to try making some of my own decisions. Other individual stress reduction reduction techniques. The nurse should assist each client in identifying individual strategies that improve the client's ability to cope with stress. Examples include individual hobbies such as fishing and scrapbooking, music therapy, pet therapy, fleet massage, and aerobic exercise. A nurse is a prayer preparing an educational seminar on stress for other nursing staff. Which of the following information should the nurse include in the discussion? Excessive stressors cause the client to experience distress. A nurse is discussing acute versus prolonged stress with a client. Which of the following effects should the nurse identify as an acute stress response? Depressed immune system, increased blood pressure, and unhappiness. A nurse is teaching a client about stress reduction techniques. Which of the following client statements indicates understanding of the teaching? Cognitive reframing will help me change my irrational thoughts into something positive. A nurse is talking with a client who reports experiencing increased stress because of a new partner is pressuring me and my kids to go live with him. I love him, but I'm not ready to do that. Which of the following recommendations should the nurse make to promote a change in the client's situation? Use assertiveness techniques. A nurse is caring for a client who states, I'm so stressed at work because of my coworker. I am expected to finish others' work because of their laziness. When discussing effectiveness communication, which of the following statements by the client to the coworker indicates client understanding? When I have to pick up extra work, I feel very overwhelmed. I need to finish, focus on my own responsibilities.